Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to our beloved lecturers to Muhammad Ibrahim Hai and to all my fellow classmates. Today, my group members and I will be presenting on the sustainable development programs that has been implemented by Global Environment Centre Malaysia. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Aina Sofia and I will be presenting on the introduction and also the first program that has been implemented by GEC. So in Malaysia, there are various non-profit organizations which has implemented programs to achieve these sustainable development goals in this country. One of the examples of NGOs is Global Environment Centre Malaysia, GEC. It has been established in 1998 and purposely aims to focus on issue of importance of global environmental. The main office HQ of GEC is located at Petaling Jaya and some other branches are located at Ipoh Perak and another one is located at Vestari Jaya Shah Alam. The mission of Global Environment Centre Malaysia is to support the protection of the environment and the sustainable use of the natural resources to meet local, regional and global needs through strategic partnerships with communities and like-minded organizations such as Sime Darby, Spark Foundation, CIMB Cares, and also Timberland. Next, GEC has played a great role in keeping the sustainable living in this country that in line with their objectives and mission. First and foremost, GEC has played the role in rehabilitation and community development where GEC concentrate on ecological approach to foster ecosystem recovery and community development in order to build long-term sustainability. GEC also a significant role in environmental education and training where their main objective is to protect the environment. It is also to endorse the Zion Civic concept as an initiative to empower the public in environmental matters. Therefore, modules and materials are developed to educate school, universities, communities and corporate organizations through the environmental education program such as River, River Range Program and Smart Ranger. Alright, so now moving on to the first program that has been implemented by GEC, which is River Care Program. GEC has developed a River Care Program which mainly focusing on fostering community involvement in the conservation and sustainable use of river and water resources through the civic science approach. This means that GEC looks closely with all solid waste management and water and river management as GEC is committed to have a deeper understanding of the significance and recognition of the benefit of our rivers in this country. This program is to promote the protection, restoration and sustainable use of rivers by enhancing multi-stakeholder participation and knowledge to stimulate local action in order to have a clean, healthy, living and vibrant rivers for people and their environment. In Malaysia, 5% of the river basins are highly polluted and 42% polluted, so another 53% of all rivers living listed as clean. The main key factor that has contributed to the situation of overall water quality is due to the lack of knowledge and public understanding about our water resources in terms of how they are being handled and how they can be managed. Therefore, GEC thinks that river, river care program will be beneficial for the public to keep the environment clean in aspect of water and rivers. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Noor Alina Mithiyo Ma'ali. Today, I will continue to present about the strategy of Global Environment Center. Uh, the second strategy is the Forest Coastal Program. Forest and Coastal Programs is one of the strategy and program of Global Environment Center, GEC, to sustain and maintain environment. Windling of forests and wetlands habitats often negatively affecting socio-economic development of a country, climate regulation and environmental stability. By managing the forests and wetlands sustainably, the negative impacts can be mitigated. 
in GEC, they promote and support sustainable management of forests and wetlands. The aim is to conserve biodiversity and mitigate climate change through awareness and rehabilitation at local, national and regional levels. The main focus is development and promotion of community-based forest management and rehabilitation activities. GEC also supports international cooperation and national action to reduce deforestation, prevent forest degradation and fires, promote a sustainable livelihood and better income among forests. Under Forest and Coastal Program, uh, we have three uh, activities which is uh, mangrove planting in Kampung Dato format is a partnership with UPS Foundation. The project aims to plant and maintain a total of 3,800 mangrove trees in degraded site in Kampung Dato Hormat with local community participation. Uh, replanting mangrove trees are uh, degraded mangrove areas is one of the effective strategy to rehabilitate and promote natural regeneration of degraded mangrove. It is one of GEC's initiative to conserve mangrove forests by collaborating with the local communities, partners, funders and volunteers. It is important to conserve mangrove forests as they play an important role in mitigating climate change and support welfare and social economy of the local community. Uh, second activity under the forest and coastal program, uh, GEC also have a forest conservation project which is a Kuala Langat North Forest Reserve. This uh, collaborative program between GEC, Selangor State Government and Selangor State Forestry Department to conserve the forest and prevent pit fires. The program includes a range of conservation actions including forest and water resource management, fire prevention and control, forest protection and rehabilitation as well as enhancing community livelihood for the orang asli and other community living in and around the forest such as through forest protection sustainable agriculture and ecotourism. Kuala Langat North Forest Reserve is a forest reserve has been coming under increasing pressure by its surrounding development and large portion have been impacted by recent years. This had led the area susceptible to pit rest and oxidization indirectly contribute to carbon emission and global warming. An area of importance for biodiversity conservation supporting rare species like the Malayan sun bear and the black form of the clouded leopard. The forest is also of significant importance to local aboriginal which is orangely community that have lived in the area. Next, uh, GEC also have a uh, other activity, uh, GEC Forest Rehabilitation Project is uh, Raja Musa Forest Reserve. Raja Musa Forest Reserve is a forest reserve area that had been illegally encroached by people and turned into farms or agriculture and settlement area. Drainage canals that were built for the illegal agriculture activities have caused water to drain out of from the pit. This had led the area susceptible to pit rest and oxidation indirectly contribute to carbon emission and global warming. The Raja Mus Forest is a place a global importance for its role in maintaining endangered and endemic species and as a huge carbon sink and preventing global warming. A collaborative program among Global Environment Center, Selangor State Government and Selangor State Forestry Department to secure 
corporate sponsorship to rehabilitate 1,000 hectare of degraded land within a 20,000 hectare peat swamp forest. The program includes a range of action including re-prevention, restoration of natural water table and encouragement of natural regeneration as well as replanting of severely degraded areas. The program involves the engagement of local communities and volunteers in carrying out the seedling procurement, enrichment, planting, post-planting treatment and monitoring of trades. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Naili Shabinti Azhar. Moving on to the next program which is Outreach and Partnership Program. Global Environment Center, GEC, believes that empowering community is a pivotal element in environmental conservation. It is because they believe that empower and engage community will ensure the success of the various environmental program as they are likely to draw resources and skills creating ownership in addition to undertaking corrective measures independently. There are several programs under Outreach and Partnership Program, such as Outreach and Partnership Program Projects and Environmental Education Program. So, the first project will be Outreach and Partnership Program Projects, which has chosen Orang Asli Community to be involved in this project. So, the objective of this project is to empower targeted Orang Asli Communities in natural resources, conservation, and sustainable livelihood. This project has chosen orang as a community that live near forests, river, and peatlands. The orang as a community in Peninsula Malaysia are marginalized in terms of access to basic services such as the electricity, water, education, and also the natural resources. Therefore, this project will assist orang asli community that live in South East Pahang Pitland landscape in Pekan, Ulu Kinta Basin in Perak, and Kuala Langai North Forest Reserve in Selangor. So, the specific objective that this project wish to achieve is to support the orang asli livelihood and pitland re rehabilitation in the western portion of the South East Pahang Pitland landscape in Pekan, Strengthen orang asli community action in catchment forest and water resource protection in Ulu Kita Basin in Perak. Strengthen rehabilitation of pit swamp forest and livelihood improvement by sahabat hutan gambut Kuala Langa Utara, Selangor. And to facilitate capacity building of orang asli communities through training and exchanges. So, the status of this project is still ongoing. Moving on to the next program, which is Environmental Education Program. Under this program, Smart Ranger Start Managing Our Resources Today is established with the aims to encourage recycling at home and communities as well as to promote zero waste lifestyle. The objective of this program is to teach people the importance of reducing waste and recycling as a way for the people to contribute to the environmental well-being and also to initiate systematic and scheduled recycling program. This program can also be seen as a platform formulation in order to learn about solid waste management. It is because there will be lack of education, knowledge and information about the solid waste management for the general public in present. Therefore, proper education regarding the issue and how to manage solid waste properly is needed in order to build a green nation for our young generation. For example, indiscriminate dumping at recycling bin can be a living evidence on why people need to be educated regarding the waste management. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nurul Ifaniza binti Zainal. I will continue with peatland programs. So, peatlands are one of the Southeast Asia's mainland farms. This occurs as peat most forests in a natural state. These wetland forests have formed mainly between major rivers in the coastal lowland plains. Approximately 35 million hectares are covered in the region with the majority in Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei Darussalam, Thailand and Vietnam, and smaller areas in Myanmar, Laos, and the Philippines. 
More than 10% of the country's land area is found in Indonesia, Malaysia and Brunei Darussalam. By supplying timber and non-timber forest products, providing water supply, flood control and many other benefits, storing an estimated 120 billion tons of carbon or about 5% of all global terrestrial carbon, pet swamp forests play a critical role in the economy and ecology of the region and to be reservoirs of distinctive and valuable biodiversity. The goal of the peatland program is to promote sustainable peatland management, particularly in Southeast Asia. This works effectively with various stakeholders, including government agencies, to encourage best practices in the management and regeneration of peatlands and to minimize peatland fires. Over the past few years, the peatland program has carried out many initiatives to support the idea of sustainable peatland management, both in the region and beyond. Projects in the Southeast Asia region have focused on facilitating the implementation of the Asian Peatland Management Strategy, in particular on enabling the growth of the Asian Member States National Peatland Action Plans. For example, the rehabilitation of peat swamp forests together with Orang Asli Community near Pahang Forest Reserve. Forests of dry and over-drained peat swamps are vulnerable to burning. GEC has entered into a collaboration with the Forestry Department and Jabatan Kemajuan Orang Asli to rehabilitate the forest and reduce the possibility of forest fire, acknowledging that certain areas of, of peat swamp forests in the Pekan Forest Reserve have been degraded. This initiative focuses on engaging the local orang asli groups, the Jakun tribe, in partnership with various funders to get involved in the recovery process and motivate them with the best management practices for pit swamp forests. This project also intends to generate, through different initiatives and programs, a possible alternative source of livelihood for them. The aim of this program is to increase the amount of water in degraded peat swamp areas through the construction of canal blocks, the replanting of trees in degraded peat, peat swamp areas, the creation of a peat group with orang asli participation to tackle peatland management problems, and the implementation of programs or activities to provide orang asli with alternative livelihood. GEC has rehabilitated the ruined area along with funds and partners by working with Jakun who live next to the forest by building and maintaining canal blocks that serve to increase water surface and reduce the risk of peat fires. No fires has been detected since the intervention. Next, as one of the initial activities of the Asian Peatland Management Initiative, the Asian Peatland Management Strategy was established due to the realization of the urgent need for wise use and sustainable management of peatlands and the emerging threats of peatlands fires and related haze pollution. The aim of the strategy is to develop better peatland management in the Asian region through collective action and enhance cooperation with a view to promoting and preserving local livelihoods, reducing fire and haze risk and contributing to global environment management. The strategy was formulated by the Asian Secretariat through a series of regional consultative workshops involving all Asian member states with the assistance of the GEC. It was endorsed in November 2005 at the 22nd ASEAN Health Technical Task Force meeting in Brunei Darussalam and in November 2006 at the 10th Asian Ministerial Meeting on the Environment meeting in the Philippines. The Asian Peatland Management Initiative is a collective cooperation mechanism among Asian member states to resolve peatland management issues on a sustainable basis with a, with a view to reducing both transboundary haze pollution and the effects of climate change. The long-term initiative, which works through the Asian structure, is planned to be coordinated by the Asian Secretariat with GEC technical and operational support. The APMI developed with the assistance of the GEC by the Asian Secretariat was developed by the 20 ASEAN Health Technical Task Force meeting in the Philippines in February 2003. The aim of the APMI is to develop better peatland management in the region. 
Through joint efforts and improved cooperation, the Asian region supports and protects local livelihoods, reduces fire risk and the related regional haze, and contributes to local environmental management. The goals are to improve awareness and develop capacity in the region on peatland management issues, to reduce the occurrence of peatland fires, to facilitate the expansion of peatland management and fire prevention activities at national and local levels and to establish a regional policy and collaboration structures to facilitate sustainable peatland management. In conclusion, in global efforts to advance climate change mitigation, adaptation and climate smart agriculture, peatland management are practical objectives that can be accomplished and are low-hanging fruits. Next achievement will be GEC has planted more than 550,000 mangrove and pits from forests with the help of more than 50,000 volunteers. This is an achievement that GEC has achieved in a 20 year period. There are many programs that have been launched in order to achieve this achievement. For example, Project under Friend of Lekir Sitiawan Mangrove Association. There are two organizations that have been collaborated under this project, which is RCMF and SALP. These two organizations have collaborated with the aim to rehabilitate degraded mangrove forests in southern Manjung through community-based rehabilitation program. This collaboration is located in Southern Manjung Pera and officially started on October 2014. The main goal of this project is to support the effort of government in protecting the mangrove forest and conserve mangrove resources through rehabilitation and sustainable management practices. Therefore, local participation can be regarded as crucial things in order to make this sustainable project successful. The achievement from this project is a total of 36,480 mangrove tree saplings were planted covering 6.861 hectare by the Friend of Mangrove Lake Stiawan in Lake Forest Reserve. Also, a peer learning program was organized to empower the Friends of Lake Stiawan to develop a homestay program for tourists to experience the Malay Kampung lifestyle. Hi, my name is Amira Mamai and today I will explain about the achievement of Global Environment Center. First, GEC has developed various environmental educational programs such as River Ranger, Smart Ranger, DRH20, Island Ranger, Peatland Forest Ranger, and Junior Peatland Forest Ranger, which has been adopted and endorsed by Ministry of Education and other government agency. So, as I mentioned before, one of the achievements on the educational program, which is Marine Port River Ranger Project, which uh, focuses on the involvement of school students from Selected Island Marine Park, for instance, Raydang Island, Tioman Island, and Cebu Tinggi Island in the activities of water quality, monitoring, and educating students about the importance of water resources. This project is funded by United Nations Development Program UNDP, the Government Malaysia, and the Global Environmental Facility Objective for this program is to conserve and ensure sustainable development selected marine park, island, Redden Island, Tiaman Island, and Cebu Tinggi Island. Then that, the program under educational program is the RH2 or known as Water Conservation Program. The program is introduced as the RH2. The RH20 project at school under the existing ever existing river ranger program. This program was running from 2014 until 2016, led by H SBH Ban Malaysia Berhad and Ministry of Education MOE Malaysia National Water Services Commission SPAN. And this project is targeted to, to targeted to selected school in Peninsula Malaysia for three years project period. This selected school is divided into three regions. Region that cover all areas of Peninsula Malaysia, then school for first year at Selangor State at Federal Territory of Kuala Lumpur, and repeated with different ten school for second year at Penang and Kedah. Last achievement under educational program is 
Peatland Program. The aim is to promote the sustainable management of peatland, especially in South Asia. It works closely with various stakeholders, including government agency, to promote best management practice in peatland management and rehabilitation, and reduce fire from peatlands. Asian Peatland Management Strategy (APMS) was developed as one of the initial action of the APMI, and due to the real realization for the presence need for wise use and suitable management of peatlands and the emerging threat of peatland fire and its associates haze pollution. So that's all for our achievement on the educational program. In conclusion, uh, sustainable development is largely about people, their well-being and equity in their relationship with each other in a context where nature society imbalance can threaten economic and social stability. Because climate change, its revised its impact and its policy responses will interact with economic production and services, human settlements and human society, climate change is uh, likely to be a significant factor in the sustainable development of many areas. In order to achieve sustainable development goals, a large urban transformation is a necessary as well as a different public management agenda. At the core of idea of sustainability is the matter of meeting people's needs for home, job and others. If people don't take care of the environment in which they live now, they won't have anything to leave behind for future generations. By having organization like Global Environment Center GEC is one of the benchmark or initiative to sustain our environment. They come up with the variety of strategies to keep and help towards sustainable development. Mm -hmm.